2005 1600 DDR4 memory motherboard combo 250 Aussie dollars. Let's go pick this bad boy up. And here we are now back at the studio with our Ryzen combo that we just picked up off the used market. B350M Bazooka motherboard, 16 gigabytes of RAM. We've got the Wraith Spire cooler with the copper heat slug. And we've got here a combo that cost me $250. I'll put the US pricing up on the screen for you guys. And then I'm gonna compare it to the 12100F combo here, which is the new option if people are looking to get into 12th generation Intel. And this is going to be the cheapest combo I could get my hands on where we've got a motherboard here that's coming in at about 180 Aussie dollars. We've got 170 Aussie dollars on the CPU with the cooler. Then we've got about $110 on the RAM. So all up, it's nearly double the price for the new combo versus the used combo if you wanna go with either option. Though if you decide to go with the used option, you may be wondering how much performance am I going to be leaving on the table as well as other things like power consumption? Well, here's where we're gonna start doing some tests. Where we've got here an RTX 2060, which believe it or not, from the people I speak to here locally, the retailers, they're telling me this is one of the best selling GPUs on the market right now. This is the six gigabyte solution, even though it was released over three years ago, it still is one of those GPUs that is selling really well because of the GPU shortage at the moment due to crypto mining. Though what we've also got here is the RTX 3050 newly released GPU. If it's a close to MSRP, it's gonna be pretty much sold out. But if you're looking to get one of these GPUs instead of say an RTX 3090 or a 6900 XT, which I personally am guilty of testing a lot of the new 12th generation stuff with. So I'm not gonna critique other people if they looking for max CPU performance, but today's gonna to be a more realistic comparison where if you're buying one of these two combinations, you're probably gonna be buying something more mid-range like these two GPUs here on the table. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test performance across three different titles at low versus high settings with these two different graphics cards. And then we're gonna come back and see, are you gonna be getting your money's worth if you go with a new solution versus a used solution with a more realistic scenario on the graphics cards. And after running a plethora of benchmarks, we are now back at the finish line. Well, actually wasn't a plethora of benchmarks. It was quite, actually quite a few. So we'll pull up some results here for you to paint the picture of the used versus the new where everyone's going crazy about 12th gen. And I'm here to sort of tell you guys, I think it's a little bit of a mixed bag with 12th gen and some of the reasons I already discussed in the 12400F review, but after testing this a little bit more in depth on the i3 versus the Ryzen 5 1600, with, especially with these mid-range GPUs, it actually gives me better answers and knowledge to say, hey, if you're building this type of PC, you can save money here versus here. And what we're gonna do now is pull up the Red Dead Redemption 2 results first, where we've got the RTX 2060 with max settings versus performance settings, or AKA the lowest settings at 1080p. And here's where we've got also the RTX 3050 results and the RTX 2060 results. And the RTX 3050, even though it says it has PCIe 4.0 X16 and GPU-Z, it's actually running at X8. So it is truly an X8 GPU. And then on, of course, the Ryzen 5 1600, that'll be running at PCIe Gen 3. So 
This doesn't, the good news is here though, when we're looking at this Gen 3 versus Gen 4 on the RTX 3050, it's not really going to make that much of a difference. And so we've got those 2060 numbers there to cross reference that in itself. But what we're seeing here with Red Dead Redemption 2, the first results that will pull up is that at 1080p max settings, there really isn't much of a difference here. In other words, the GPU bound nature of this game on these two graphics cards is making it so that if you went out and bought a 12100F new, you wouldn't be getting much benefit over a Ryzen 5 1600. Though then we go to the performance settings and it's a pretty similar scenario where we've got not a whole lot of difference to be gained from going with a 12100F. And what we'll do is we'll quickly interlude here and throw up the Cinebench results where the 12100F, four cores, eight threads, it does perform better than a Ryzen 5 1600. So it is a better CPU even with four cores, eight threads versus six cores, 12 threads. That's one thing to keep in mind. It does have a lot better IPC essentially, and it is running at higher clock speeds too. So 4.1 gigahertz on those four core eight threads versus 3.4 gigahertz on those six core 12 threads. Now we'll talk about some of the other contingencies later. They are very important, but going through on Red Dead Redemption 2, virtually no difference between these two CPUs. It's nothing to really go, oh my God, I got to go out and buy a 12100F if you're playing Red Dead. Though the next game here is Fortnite, and here's where you will see a bigger difference between these two CPUs, especially when it comes to dropping the settings down to those performance or lower settings. In this case, I do use the Epic View Distance because it's what a lot of the competitive Fortnite players play with. And here's where we're seeing 233, for instance, on the RTX 2060 versus 178. And then on the RTX 3050, we're still getting a bit more performance out of the 12100F in this scenario. Though when we go to Epic settings, we're really not losing a whole lot of FPS. We're not leaving much on the table where we're getting 82 versus 70, 92 versus 82. So the performance gap in terms of percentages is bigger when we get more CPU bound in Fortnite. So if you're a competitive pro on a budget, then maybe you'd still wanna get the Ryzen 5 1600 because it's still representing better bang for the buck, at least in what we paid for both these combos here today. But we'll get over the last game and that is Call of Duty Cold War. And here's where we got 155 average FPS on the 12100F at max settings versus 114. And then if we go to the 3050, it's again looking like a similar scenario where those gaps are there. And then if we move to performance settings, we're getting quite a sizable difference where actually the biggest difference in this whole comparison was the RTX 3050 in this game on these two different setups, 180 versus 128. And even beating out that of the RTX 2060 numbers on the lower settings. So whatever the PCIe Gen 4 is doing, in Call of Duty, it's doing a benefit for the 12100F on the performance settings. So up until this point in time, the performance for gaming is really good. The Cinebench performance is really good. This CPU is a beast on the surface, but once we start looking at other things, and when we talked about those contingencies earlier in the video, I'm actually gonna focus on them now because these contingencies don't make me that excited about 12th gen, especially about 12th gen budget, which in the past, you guys have seen me, I've been excited about Ryzen 5 1600, I've been excited about 2600, 3600, and also 10400F, for example, but I'm not so excited about the 12400F and the 12100F. And the reason being is because if we look at these gaming power consumption results, for instance, we're using in Red Dead Redemption 2, where we scored similar FPS, we're actually using less power on the Ryzen 5 1600 whilst we're gaming. And now that's one of those things where if you go forward with generations of tech, you should be better on all fronts. It shouldn't just be one front that you're winning on, and that's the max performance crown. It should be also the power efficiency because with that power efficiency comes other benefits. Like for instance, you get away with getting uh, less components on the motherboard, which brings the cost of the motherboard down. You get away with using a cheap cooler, which in this case, the cooler is kind of cheap, but since the power consumption's high, the cooler does a terrible job. And so you've got now these contingencies that start to weigh in and it makes it so the 12100F isn't actually that good of a CPU when we look at the whole picture. 
So whilst we're gaming, we're using less power on the Ryzen 5 1600, a five-year-old CPU. We also got a better cooler on the Ryzen 5 1600. And this time around, we did manage during the stress test to get the Intel stock cooler to 100 degrees. So congrats on throttling during the Cinebench R23 results. And this uh, was at 62 degrees, this race spire. And it was actually more quiet at the same time. Then we've got, of course, the motherboard costs here because this CPU does have a higher power consumption whilst we're doing Cinebench, it also means that we're gonna need a beefier motherboard. And this motherboard, you're probably thinking, well, Brian, these power consumption results have actually been distorted by the fact that you've used a cheap motherboard. And I'm actually gonna be doing a review on this uh, B660 motherboard where the results will actually shock you. This motherboard actually has a very decent VRM. And so it's not the motherboard, especially the VRM, that's holding this combo back when it comes to giving you those efficiency figures because I've already cross-referenced these numbers with higher-end Z690 motherboards. And I can tell you this VRM is not causing those issues. The fact is with 12th gen, is actually a power hungry architecture, but because the performance uplift is so big, especially on productivity, it does look like it's a much better efficient solution when it comes to doing that heavy simulation work where the cores and threads are running at 100% all the time, you're actually gonna see an improvement over 10th gen and previous uh, Intel generations, and it's even gonna come punching blows with the Ryzen stuff. But when it comes to gaming, because it's a new architecture and it is more power hungry, it's gonna be more inefficient for gaming. And so I feel like those inefficiencies is something Intel is going to have to work on if they want to be truly creating maximum hype about their new architecture. So with those results and now contingencies out of the way with, it's time to give you guys my thoughts on today's tests that we did and why we did them, where I wanted to do different tests with more mid-range graphics cards that people are buying rather than, and I'm guilty of this too, where a lot of reviewers will just test CPUs with 6900 XTs or RTX 3090s. But this time around, it's getting to the stage where it's actually so far-fetched to test with those GPUs on these kinds of setups that I feel like it's irrelevant actually for making a real-world recommendation. Where in today's video, testing with the mid-range graphics cards, saw that the 12100F gave a nice boost in performance if we were going for that max FPS, maximum refresh rate sort of gamer. But if we up the settings and we like a bit of high settings while we're gaming, there's gonna be very little difference between these two setups, but there is gonna be that big difference in price. And so going with a RTX 2060 or a 3050, if you can pick up a 3050 for a decent price, you're going to be not seeing your money's worth on the 12100F. That's just my opinion. And sure, you've got the upgrade option in the future. You can add in the uh, 10 core or the things, the 12 core, 20 thread i7-12700F. But even then, by the time you maybe want to upgrade this, there'll be something else out that'll offer better value in the new sector than this will. So I think going with something like a Ryzen 5 1600 especially if you wanna play games and you're just looking for a mid-range graphics card and that's more within your budget, you're definitely gonna get better value out of going with used. Of course, that is providing you've got a good local market where you are. Now, I completely understand some places in the world, the used market, there just is none. Uh, but where I am locally, and I know a lot of guys in the US and the UK, Japan, etc., the used market is popping, it's crack-a-lacking. And so if your used market is crack a I'd definitely look at getting yourself some used Ryzen goodness or even like a used 10400F or used older stuff because it's gonna give you a much better experience for the bang for the buck wise with some of these mid-range GPUs. Probably besides the 6500XT and we'll get onto that in a separate video where that's only got PCI X4 by four and that when we step that down to PCI 3 from the tests I've seen, you're leaving a bit of performance on the table, but I wanna do some more tests and actually test that also, and this card too, with PCIe Gen 2. because so I know there's some guys out there who are rocking those older used Xeons, and they wanna know, should I just skip these newer GPUs entirely and just stick to the budget used GPUs? And uh, look forward to giving you that video. But when all said and done, the 12100F, it isn't the latest and greatest in all aspects. Yes, performance-wise it is, and especially when we look at the CPU 
value on the surface, it is winning the race. But when we start digging a little bit deeper, it's actually not the best in all categories. And I think that's when I, when I was doing the 12 400F review, I was sort of seeing that come out. Now that I've tested this with mid-range stuff, I can see those weaknesses of 12th gen coming out a little bit more and I can report on that and sort of maybe shy away from why I haven't been so over the moon with budget 12th gen stuff as opposed to the 12900K. If you're a productivity workhorse kind of guy, you're gonna be getting a lot of um, time savings out of that 12900K, for example. But when it comes to the 12100F, Maybe if you've come into this video thinking it was definitely the only choice for you, you might come out with a bit of an open mind and say, hey, maybe go and use is gonna save me that bit of money and I'm gonna get some benefits that I never thought existed on the older used stuff. Anyhow, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about all the tests we did here today and love reading those thoughts and opinions too. Just like this question of the day here, which comes from Smokey Joe 123 e And they ask, do you ever sell your faulty parts on eBay, etc.? Some of those faulty motherboards can at least get you some cash back on the resale market. And actually, yes, I, eBay, this is a really good question. The reason I picked this one up is because if you sell faulty stuff on eBay, you can actually get some good money back on that stuff. There's people out there that like buying faulty stuff for pretty good prices, especially faulty GPUs. I found some of the prices people were getting for faulty GPUs was actually pretty insane. For instance, I sold, I think an RX 570, a faulty GPU, totally transparent with everything. The GPU just doesn't work. And that's what I said. I couldn't get it back to life. Uh, I sold that, I think it was for like 120 Aussie dollars. And that's like a faulty RX 570. Like before all this GPU madness started, you could buy an RX 570 that was perfectly working for less than that on the used market. So it was kind of crazy to see that faulty parts can fetch so much in this, especially GPUs. So if you've got faulty parts, you might want to check the price of them and see if you can legitimately sell them for good money, especially on eBay, because sometimes they do fetch good money. And yes, I do do that from time to time. And I hope that answers that question. And if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell. And also if you wanna see some behind the scenes talk and access, kind of like today's video, but it's just more about everything non-tech related than for as little as a dollar a month, you can become a Tech Yes member at Tech Yes City. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.